Today, of course, Ferrari on the grid. We're in a fantastic position. Front row in qualifying. Charles Leclerc, the home driver, and a driver that really needed to bounce back in terms of the World Championship, was in a great position to do so. And he had to win the Monaco Grand Prix, especially after the Spanish Grand Prix, where, of course, uh, the Ferrari car failed him. He had to get the victory in Monaco, even if Max Verstappen uh, finished in second, meaning that Leclerc's um, points gain was not that big. They had to win in Monaco. But, of course, they did not. And the way the Grand Prix was lost was very sad and disappointing for Charles Leclerc, as these two teams, Ferrari and Red Bull, in yesterday's race were the ones, of course, contending for the victory in Monaco. No Mercedes to be seen this time in Monaco. So, obviously, we had a very long delay to really get the race underway, but once it got underway, the two Ferraris, of course, led away from first and second. It was a rolling start, and the Ferraris definitely had the pace of the two Red Bull. Charles Leclerc was about three and a half to four and a half seconds clear of Carlos Sainz, and then another second and a half back to Perez, of course, who went on to be the victor. So he had a pretty good gap after not that many laps by the time that first pit stop came for Perez and then Leclerc. Um, yeah, pretty good gap to have by that point. But as I'll come to now, you can see Sergio Perez pitted on lap 16. Charles Leclerc, though, would pit on lap 18. One lap too late for him and Ferrari. Now, uh, with Sergio Perez, once he uh, pitted in the Red Bull, I mean, we saw the intermediate tyres were already working well with Pierre Gasly because Gasly had already overtaken a couple cars, which, of course, overtaking at Monaco is very hard and you have to have a massive pace advantage over the other car to get the overtake done. So we saw that the intermediates were working, um, but Sergio Perez definitely caught Ferrari unawares because Ferrari would come out after the race and say that they didn't think the Inter would be that um, strong and just that much better uh, than the the wet that the Ferrari uh, were on. But if we look at uh, this graphic here, which is the lap times from the Grand Prix, you can see how Ferrari just got it horribly, horribly wrong. So Sergio Perez on the far left-hand side, he pitted on lap 16. Obviously, it says P next to that number. And then the lap after, which was his outlap, he did a 132.1. His outlap was quicker than any lap he had done before on the wet tyre. So he was already clearly showing, and in the sectors on his outlap, clearly showing that he was miles quicker on the inters, probably at least five seconds quicker on that first lap than he was on the wet tyre. And on also lap 17, if you look across to Charles Leclerc here, on the far right, if you look to lap 17 for him, of course, he pitted on lap 18, and you can see the P there uh, next to number 18. On lap 17, which was Charles Leclerc's, uh, Leclerc, sorry, um, his last complete lap that he did on the wet tyre, he did a 131.4. Perez, only seven tenths of a second slower, even though... Perez, obviously on lap 17, that was his outlap and he would have lost at least a few seconds to Leclerc because um, obviously when you know Perez crosses the line to start his new lap, loses a bit of time, exiting the pits, and then obviously it's a slower run on the release uh, just after the first corner. So already there is clear evidence that you know Perez in the Red Bull on Inters is very, very quick. And then if we look at lap 18 for Sergio Perez... Perez did a 1 minute 25.2. That is, compared to his best time that he did on the wets, was what? Seven and a half seconds quicker, I think, for Sergio Perez. And if you look at Leclerc on lap 18, when he pitted, the same lap that Perez did that 125.2, obviously Leclerc pitted, he did a 150.8 for that lap. Pitting in Monaco is about, what, 20, 21 uh, seconds in terms of lap time loss, um, I believe. So, you know, 
Charles Leclerc for that lap, let's say if he had completed lap 18 still on the wet tyres, would have done a 130-131. So Perez, at this point, is at least five seconds a lap quicker. Why did Ferrari not pit Leclerc a lap before? If they had pitted him at the end of lap 17, Perez may still have got the lead, but it would have been close. It would have been close. Leclerc may have just held on to the lead. Perez may just have got it, but Leclerc certainly, if Perez had got it, um, Leclerc certainly would have been a lot closer to, um, to Sergio Perez than he was when he eventually pitted because he lost about, um, well, at least seven or eight seconds, I believe, in this uh, two laps that he went without pitting after Perez, of course, made his pit stop. Now, at that point, Leclerc, of course, he came out in, at the time, it was third place. It was a net second because Carlos Sainz was still um, out there on track in the lead on the uh, wet compound tyre. And if we just move on, as you can see here, Carlos Sainz on that wet compound tyre. Carlos Sainz, the plan with him was to go or stay on the wet compound and then move straight from the wet tyre to the dry tyre and just skip out the intermediates, which around Monaco is probably the best strategy. We saw this with Lewis Hamilton in 2016 where he did it and that really helped him uh, to win the race in 2016 over Daniel Ricciardo in the Red Bull. Of course, Ricciardo's really slow pit, uh, pit stop probably was the main thing that uh, won Hamilton the race. But, you know, going from wet to dry instead of wet to inter to dry definitely helped Hamilton that day. And for Carlos Sainz, it also helped him because it made, um, it made sure he was able to still, even though Perez pretty much caught back up um, to the back of him, he wasn't... When he made his pit stop, of course, for dry tyres, which was a lap before Perez and I think and Verstappen, he didn't lose anywhere near as much time, you know, as if, you know, he went from, if he did, go from wet to inter to dry. But of course, uh, when he came in, Charles Leclerc was directly behind. Of course, this is Carlos Sainz's pit stop. And yeah, directly behind was Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari, who lost two or three seconds having to wait, you know, stuck behind Sainz. And that was another two or three seconds lost for him. Now, if I just quickly move on to this screen share and come to this video, you will hear what was going on on Team Radio at that exact time. Hopefully, um, you guys uh, will be able to hear the uh, team radio well enough. I'll put the sound up a bit. But you can hear what Ferrari at the time were doing. And you can also hear exactly why Ferrari still, when it comes to important strategic decisions, still are just hopeless when it comes to these type of situations, as we'll get to now. So if I go to... 35 seconds and i'll just quickly uh, put the sound on so hopefully you guys should hear this so here we go and box now box box now box for hard stay out stay out stay out so you can just hear there, if you did hear that, you can hear right there. They tell him, right, come in for hard tyres. Obviously, Sainz came in just ahead of him. And then literally, as he's entering the pit lane, oh, no, 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 stay out, stay out, stay out. They don't know what they're doing. They literally do not know what they're doing. How can you do that literally as he's going into the pits? Just be like, no, 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 stay out, stay out, stay out. You've got to be absolutely certain in what you are doing i know everything at this point of the race you know it's a lot of things are happening very quickly i get that but they have got to commit to something strategically here i mean if they kept leclerc out for another lap that probably would have been even worse for him he wouldn't have lost any more positions really but 
he would have lost more time at the time to his teammate Sainz and the two Red Bulls. So it was just so, so stupid what they did then. Again, I'll play it again. And again, you can just hear precisely why Ferrari strategically are so poor. They do not have a, a clear plan of what they are doing and are unable really to adapt to what is going on in a race. I'll play it again. And box now, box, box now, box for hard. Stay out, stay out, stay out. Fuck, fuck! Why, what the fuck? So again, you can hear that. Just such a bad call. Honestly, such a bad call there for Charles Leclerc. And of course, and he then, like I said, he lost two or three seconds having to wait behind Carlos Sainz. I mean, maybe if he had stayed on track and, you know, gone round, he wouldn't... You know, I mean, obviously, he wouldn't have lost those two or three seconds where he had to wait for Sainz, but because the drives were definitely the better tyre when Sainz went onto it, um, he would have still lost some sort of time, especially towards the end of the lap where it was pretty dry. So, very poor strategy there for Ferrari. And you can see, if I go to this, the amount of time compared to his teammate... That he lost and also the two red bulls in that second stop so science of course it was his first pit stop he was a he did a 24.6 for the you know the amount of time he lost in the pits leclerc 28.0 so that's three and a half seconds he lost in the pit lane when perez gained about three and a half seconds on leclerc and verstappen how he was able to get past Leclerc was because, of course, when Leclerc went on to Inters, Max was right behind him, or about a second or so behind him, and then gained about a second, just over a second, in the second pit stop phase. Um, and that was what was, you know, that's what allowed Max Verstappen to get into third place. Now, on reflection for Ferrari, I think... You'd have to say, again, what they did was it was very poor, very undecisive, and just it, what happened to me just screamed that they didn't have a, a real clear plan and also didn't really know what to do um, during those, of course, very tense moments in the Grand Prix. What really, in, in terms of that first pit stop for Leclerc, what the options really were for him were or for ferrari rather there were three options when perez pitted either they could have responded with the intermediate tires instead of you know then responding two laps later they should have responded a lap later the second option would have been to pit at the same time as perez or a lap before to try and protect themselves against red bull possibly doing that the third option, though, which I think was the best strategy decision they could have gone for, and they actually did do with Carlos Sainz, which honestly, looking back, I don't understand why they give Carlos Sainz, the number two driver, the better strategy than Charles Leclerc. Um, the best strategy was to stay on the wet and then go from wet to dry. That's what allowed Sainz to jump. Uh, we didn't jump position, but he he didn't really lose out on anything and if you look also down the order george russell for example was behind norris before norris went from wet to inter but russell stayed on the wet and then went from wet to dry and eventually once it all shook out russell was in fifth place ahead of lando norris so that was the best strategy to do but ferrari for some reason put sights on it their number two driver but leclerc they decided to go for probably the riskier option at that point, considering Perez's extra pace in the Red Bull. Just a baffling decision, honestly, I think, for them. And Leclerc had uh, quite a bit to say after the Grand Prix. And uh, we'll move on to that now. And uh, he said after the race... Obviously, in these conditions, you rely a little bit on what the team can see, but because you don't see what the teams are doing with intermediates with dry tyres. And then he said he was asked questions whether I wanted to go from extreme wets to slicks. And he said, Leclerc, 
yes, but not now. He probably said that a few laps, I'd imagine, before Perez pitted. And he said it would be a bit later on in the race that that happened. And then he said, just after that, I don't understand what made us change our minds and go on the intermediate. And then said, we got the undercut. I stopped behind Carlos. There's been a lot of mistakes and we cannot afford to do that. It's been hard or it's hard as it's been the other years here. So I'm getting used to getting back home disappointed, but we cannot do that. Um, especially in the moment that we are in now, we are extremely strong. Our pace is strong. We need to take opportunities. We cannot lose so many points like this. And then he said later on in the, uh, well, later on in this article from racefans.net, uh, Leclerc said the first mistake was a very was a yeah was a very clear decision and a very wrong one from the moment or from that moment onwards the mess started and yeah uh, the best strategy as I said uh, just a moment ago the best strategy for Leclerc and Ferrari considering as well they had track position I mean Perez and Red Bull what they did they had to do to try and do something to you know, fight uh, Ferrari or try and win the race. What Red Bull did, even though it wasn't probably the best strategy over, uh, overall for the race, was the best thing for them to do to try and force Ferrari into doing something, which, of course, they did. But Ferrari just had to stick with what they did with Carlos Sainz. But, of course, they did not do that. A very, very poor decision from them. And, of course, it re uh, resulted... Once it all shook out, in Sergio Perez leading from Carlos Sainz with Max Verstappen in third, and then in fourth place, it was Charles Leclerc. Now, I know there are a couple other reasons why you could argue that Leclerc didn't win, um, such as traffic, you know, Alex Albon holding him up, even though, yes, it did cost him two or three seconds, but the majority of the reason he lost is uh, because of his team. And then uh, the second thing I've obviously heard about, you know, since then, is obviously... The Red Bulls possibly cutting the pit exit line. Uh, from the evidence I've seen, Perez, I don't think, cut it at all. And Verstappen, I think, may have just had some of his tyre go over it, but was still pretty much on the line. So, yeah, uh, th those definitely, those things were definitely not the reasons why uh, Ferrari did not win the um, Grand Prix. The reason Ferrari lost and the reason Charles Leclerc had his Grand Prix destroyed, his home victory, which was looking certain destroyed, was all because of his own team. And yet again, Ferrari get in their own way, trip over themselves when it looked like it was going to be certainly a great result for the team. I said after qualifying, only Ferrari would blow a 1-2 uh, from qualifying in Monaco. And that is exactly what they did. And of course... After this, Red Bull will now have the ascendancy in the championship battle. It's not over, for sure. Ferrari are definitely still in the battle, but it's definitely advantage Red Bull. And given that Ferrari had to do well in these uh, last two races that have just gone, because they had the best car, to not win any of them when Leclerc was leading both is absolutely colossal in terms of a loss for them. Like I said, championship not over, but certainly uh, their confidence very low right now. And Red Bull definitely have the advantage in this year's championship fight. <laughs> 